Hi guys, and for those of you who are new, I'm FPL Nymphria and welcome to the home of FPL videos and to those of you who know me, welcome back. So, ready or not, the game has dropped. Now is the time. It is live and we can tinker all we want. Now, there are several more weeks before the Premier League kicks off and plenty more transfers to make on and off the FPL field. But here's a look at my first draft based on initial look at the new prices. Pickford could start for me in goal. 5.5 does seem a little steep for Pickford, but he was the third best goalkeeper in the FPL points last season with 161 total points. He was also second best on save penalties behind Etheridge, who is no longer in the Premier League. My second goalkeeper is likely to be as cheap as mud, given the high prices this season. I will likely have to go to a 4.5 if I want a second playing keeper to fall back on, but right now button at 4 mil will do as a placeholder. Moving on to defence, first up we have Wan-Bissaka. I don't expect him to still be at Crystal Palace by the end of this transfer window, especially with that 50 million bid from United. Should he move to United, he will have Chelsea at first, a team that have lost Hazard already this summer and are unable to replace any players because of their transfer ban. I fancy United to want to grab this and with Wolves and Crystal Palace up after that, if Wan-Bissaka is at Man United, he will want to hit the ground running. With three assists last season and 120 points, he could be a very good option for your team. Then we have the dynamic Liverpool defence duo. Expensive? Yes, maybe, but worth it? Hmm? Very possibly. If they pull off the form of last season all over again, they will be especially. The main decision here is if to go Trent or Robbo. Robbo and Van Dijk were the top two scoring defenders of last season. Robbo with 213 points and Van Dijk just behind him on 208. So I will likely go with Van Dijk being the cheaper of the three and one of Trent or Robbo. Trent got one goal and 13 assists in 2,460 minutes last season with 16 clean sheets and Robertson on the other hand got zero goals and two assists in three 1216 minutes with 21 clean sheets. Trent is in for now based on the fact that he was injured a lot of last season and I think Klopp kind of favoured him a little bit but eased him in slowly into the first team but I think he will be nailed this season so I'd be willing to take a punt on him. Now that does mean I will be stuck when it comes to considering my Liverpool attack but I'll get on to that in just a moment. My next two defenders at the moment are just fillers. I tend to go 3-4-3 three, three at the start of most FPL seasons and I'll explore other options here definitely but for now let's stick with my comfort zone. So I've just put two playing 4.5 mils in now and I'll look at the championship sides and hunt around for a bit cheaper for some bargains here and let you guys know a bit nearer the season for those little gems for our bench fodder. Now where I found my three 4-3 difficult is in midfield. Clearly I have too cheap 4.5 fodder in here at the moment and this is not great because in my 3-4-3 formation I will need to play one of these and I can't say either of these fills me with any extreme confidence. My initial reaction is that we are being forced to go one or two premium up top with these prices. As to get Sterling and Salah or Mane here and still have two decent priced midfielders will be tough. Especially with so much up front in forwards. Stevens and Hayden I know get some game time at least. Stevens with a goal and an assist and Hayden with a goal and four assists in the 18-19 Premier League season. I'd much prefer to have just one of these though so more tinkering has to be done here. With Sterling out of the picture for now I have opted for the cheaper Bernardo Silva who was well off Sterling's pace last season. However, Bilva did seem to pick up after a dip in form to finish strongly. He got seven goals and eight assists last season and is a firm favourite of Pep. The next big argument, as mentioned earlier, resides back at Salah and Mane in midfield and back to Liverpool again. I am a big Salah fan and at the moment I would rather go with who I find the most fun to own and watch. Also being the most expensive out of the two, Mo being 12.5 and Sadio being 11.5, it means I can downgrade at any time. Liverpool get off to a great start with Wolves, Southampton and Arsenal at first, two of which are at home. And if you're wondering the difference between Salah and Mo last season, Salah got 22 goals and 12 assists, 
to Mane's 22 goals and 3 assists, Mo with 259 points and Mane with 231. Both were Golden Boot winners. So for now, I've gone with Mo, but time will tell whether I stick or not. Last but not least, in midfield I have Milivojevic. Now I am considering Sigurdsson here, but Mili is cheaper, so for now he stays. Why one of these two? Well, it's simple. V-A-R. I've been watching a lot of Women's World Cup this summer and it seems to be having a big impact on the game. If this translates to the Premier League, there could be a lot of penalties. Another reason for me choosing Salah over Mane as he seems to take the penalties unless Milner is on the field. Millie got 12 goals and 2 assists last season. He quietly ticked away. Most importantly, he scored 10 penalties, only missing one against Pickford, who saved 3 of the 5 penalties he faced in the 18-19 Premier League season. Another reason for me getting Pickford. Moving on to my forwards. Aguero is always the first person on my team sheet. He lights up my life. Sterling is usually too expensive to place alongside my favourite Aguero. So my hope is that by pairing Bilver and Aguero over Sterling by himself, that they can get more points. Last season, Sterling got 234 points to the combined score of Aguero and Bilver's 355 points. Khan played 201 matches and got 21 goals and 11 assists. He is also now the most expensive player of the forwards in the game, so that also gives me great flexibility to move to anyone should things not work out with him. Moving on to Rahul Jimenez. Now, no, it's not too bad in price. He finished the game at 6.9 last season and is now weighing in at 7.5 early doors. That's not half bad for the third best striker in the game. Last season, with 181 points and 13 goals and 10 assists, he didn't do too badly. Can he reproduce this again this season? It's tough to know, especially with Leicester, Man United and Burnley up first, but at that price it's not a bad punt. And lastly we have Kingy. Bournemouth have two supposedly easy games at first in the promoted sides Sheffield United and Aston Villa. I was tempted by my on-off Wilson and anyone who knows me will know my love-hate relationship with Wilson and I may still go crawling back, but Kingy is cheaper and he does tend to take the penalties mostly and if you have not sensed a theme in this video yet then I am not sure how many times I can say V A R as it will be a big thing this season and penalty takers will be a must in your FPL teams. Kingy got 12 goals and 3 assists and unlike Wilson he has only gone up a touch since the end of last season from 6.4 to 6.5. Absolute bargain. It's at this point I'd like to say thanks to easyedit.pro for use of their package and to Fancy Football Fix my sponsors for use of their graphics. Make sure you go check them out guys the link will be in the description below. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, hit that notification bell and subscribe for more FPL videos. Until next time, Nymphria out.